6.30, we'll call the meeting to order. We have all the board members there, yep. So first on the agenda is to approve the agenda. Um, is there anything else that needs to be amended or included this evening that's not already on there? Nope, I'm good. Okay. We will have a executive session this evening um, after, um, but uh, just need a motion to approve the agenda. So moved. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. All right. Let's have that. I appreciate everybody uh, offering up to go to virtual this evening. I know I, at the school today, like everything at the school, like blew up today to the point that they, I believe, have shut down school for tomorrow um, for the middle school. So both of my daughters were close contacts that are now home positive. So um, even though the CDC says that vaccinated person, I could attend the meeting in person. I was like, that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> so, so I was like, I told Teresa, I was like, uh, I won't be there. But uh, so I appreciate everybody uh, changing their schedules around. Um, and as we do, as we will have in the executive session this, e this evening, there will be some paperwork that would have been included in the executive session that we will not have this evening. Um, so Teresa will do her best job to uh, bring us up to speed on those um, uh, pieces. So, um, and the only thing I didn't see on there, we probably should take care of the appointments is um, the Tatrots are 630. Um, and then I'm assuming that we're looking at um, equity and inclusion committee. What time was that going to start out? 645? Yeah, I think so. I think I had, you know, we usually try to allot 15 minutes for yeah. appointments. So yeah. Yeah. No big deal. I just noticed it afterwards, so. So we will go right to our 6.30 appointment. I see Jess is on and her family. So we had, uh, about a month ago, we had talked about uh, in regards to some stormwater, stormwater issues at 48 Dart Hill. And um, uh, we've spent, uh, I don't know, the last four weeks the town end of it, just tr trying to figure out what our, um, obligations and legalities are in regards to the property and how and how we have done uh, um, or how we have worked with residents in the past on similar instances to make sure we're doing everything um, fairly. Um, so we've collected that information. We have that to go over and then we can have a discussion on it. So I'll let, I'll turn it over to Therese. So we did do a little bit of research. So hi, Jessica. Hi, Joshua. And uh, I, we had talked about um, the concern was that there was a culvert on the property <clears throat> that discharges onto the property. And we had obviously that the culvert has been there for a long time. So because there's certain things with the towns. So certainly towns are immune from tort claims for damages because we have what a court would call a privilege defense. And because the culvert has been there for more than 15 years, uh, we have a prescriptive easement, um, which basically, whether we have permission or not, since it's been in place for a continuous period of 15 years, we're basically our, our only charge here is to keep the culvert in working order. Um, that being said, personally, um, I my recommendation or ask of the select board is that in the spring, we ask the road foreman to go up and on the way up on the right to Jessica and uh, Joshua's properties on the right, remove any berm that's on the side of Dart Hill so that if there's any water sheeting off, it would sheet off in the back part, which is where Joshua had said there was a culvert and they, that part is already kind of wet and get the for the natural sheeting of the water to go off on that side of the road it might relieve some pressure from that culvert we also could work with an hour right of way um, over the bank which is where the culvert is coming out now and try to divert some of the water from the culvert more along the edge of the river bank to kind of extend it along the bank so that instead of it coming down and pouring in your driveway it's kind of hopefully spreading out on the bank on the way to the river more towards your driveway and um, install some stone at the outfall of the culvert 
to, you know, slow any erosion. Also usually outfall, you know, stone at an outfall will help slow the speed of the water as well. So that way we could try to do a little bit of, you know, maintenance on our side to at least take the water. So it's not coming down, you know, where it is, try to try to move it along the bank a little bit. Um, that I think would help because, um, you know, because of where it's out falling right now. The other thing too, is I did reach out to GMP because I know that you guys had a concern about the pole and the anchor and the gentleman did take a look at it. And he said, yeah, while, while the anchor is near the culvert runoff, uh, it's not in any danger coming out of the ground. He thought that it was all, all fine. Um, the other thing I think that we could do, or possibly if the select board will agree to do, is to um, provide uh, the Tatroats with a one, like a 15 inch by 20 foot piece of driveway culvert so that if so that when you build your house, we could give you a piece of driveway culvert to go where your existing drive is and you could have your excavation contractor, you know, install that that might help with any water that's coming off the bank kind of leave your driveway and go, you know, towards the river where obviously where you want it to go. Um, I think that we could ask the Tatros to sign a release for any potential claim and we could just give them a piece of driveway culvert when they're prepared to build kind of, you know, take care of some issues and, and give them something else for when they build. So that's what I have for information. So it sounds like Therese with the town doing some work in and along the right of way, uh, which you had mentioned about some erosion stone and then um, some berm removal so that we can get you know better sheeting of the water off the side of the road to alleviate some of the force of the pipe. Um, and that we would give uh, one piece of driveway culvert pipe, which normally is not the responsibility of the town. Is that correct, Therese? Correct, right. Um, and then, you know, if we put those pieces together, there's a little bit of work that the town would do along the roadway. And when they build their house, have that driveway culvert put in, then the water should recede to the other side of the property near the river. Is that you know, correct? that's, that's my hope. Obviously, water, because of where they're built, they're so down, you know, obviously set down in, you know, so anything that's going to sheet is going to sheet towards them, unfortunately. But I'm hoping that if we do this, it'll take some of the pressure off um, that culvert by kind of getting, you know, trying to coerce the water to go, you know, further down and, and away from where it, where it's doing where it's going now. So I guess probably the easiest thing would be to do is first would be to get the board members to weigh into Teresa's idea and. If that is a go, um, then probably let Jessica and her family, um, it doesn't have to be a right now decision, but maybe get back to us on what you think about the solution um, and go from there. Does that sound reasonable? I think so, yeah. Okay. So what does the board members feel about uh, Teresa's um, place to, uh, to go ahead and do do some minor work as she detailed there as well as give out the the driveway culvert i mean because you all should have gone up and seen it by now so you should all know exactly where we're talking about mm -hmm. i see that as a as a solution again as you stated when when this is done there might be some tweaking some stone or something but yeah we can't do much more than what you suggested, I don't believe, at this time. And Paul or Lynn Lane, Gene? Well, how does, that, how does that impact the very end of that culvert where it's actually coming, the water is coming out just above the river? So the stone would go in that area where the end of that culvert is so that it would then flow down into the river? 
No, the culvert is much further up onto their property. It's not, it's right near, it's near where the pole is. So basically right. what the stone would do as an outfall is basically to try to slow the erosion right there. Cause in the pictures they showed how it had eroded down the bank. Yeah. So <clears throat> hopefully we could try to, you know, put something there obviously to slow the erosion, but I'm hoping that if Alan, you know, w could dig a little bit on the outside, almost like bank it so that the water, when it comes out, if it's not a heavy flow, could kind of, you know, go to the right and go down the bank and maybe disperse itself a little bit. It's hard because the culvert has been in there so long. Um, the options are tough. We can't, you know, pulling it is very difficult there's because of the way that the road is built and the property owner next door has um she already has you know water issues and we can't to divert new to put in a new culvert we would have to get you know easement from someone else but the fact that this this one has been there so long our our, our obligation is only to keep it in working order i'm just trying to think of some creative solution to take the pressure off a little bit mm -hmm. um, i mean basically Basically, at this point, the work that Therese proposed would somewhat alleviate the water issues between the outlet of the pipe to about the start of the driveway. Right. But until the driveway culvert is put in, the water <laughs> would, not, would still just be sitting there on the property. Yeah, and it's hard too. I mean, I'm not going to guarantee this is going to be the perfect solution. You know, once we, the road crew gets in there and can kind of see what it is, maybe they'll, you know, can dig it out and stone line a little bit to try to encourage the water to flow. Basically, if you're looking at the culvert, you know, more towards the right down towards the bridge, you know, it's, we'll have to see, you know, once we get in there, it's, it's not the perfect solution, but it's something to try to help the situation. But it's also going to depend what, you know, we find once we dig kind of in the bank as far as how, well, you know, water's water. It's going to go where it wants, but we're going to try to do something to get to move it. Okay. Yeah, I appreciate, Therese, that you kind of put together an approach that, um, you know, knowing that the town technically doesn't have to do anything still kind of gives us some options, give the Tarot some options. Um, and I, I mean, I think we're, we're kind of doing the best we can do with it and not knowing that it might not be perfect or it might not be the end all be all solution. You know, to me, it sounds like a good starting place at least, and then kind of assess in the, in the spring. And then also as they get their driveway culvert in and all that. I would also uh, add that when they, um, build, it is possible for their, when they in, put in any foundation for the excavation to include some uh, swales that would redirect the water to a, to either to the culvert or behind their house to the river uh, that might uh, alleviate a good bit of water that's coming off of that hill. I live on a mountainside as well and uh, have a garage that, uh, and a house, but the garage especially is getting water uh, off of that hill and I'm redoing the ground behind it and I don't have nearly the space uh, that they have. So I that's a solution that I think uh, they might want to consider at that time. The other thing is, I'm not sure, I didn't look, and I apologize, I should have looked to see what zoning district they're in um, or what the property is zoned as, because if you're within the, you know, the hazard you know, flood area, there'll be, if you can rebuild it, there'll be things that you have to do anyways. And I, I'm unsure, and I, again, I apologize, I didn't look to see what your what zone you're in. So even if you can build a house there, um, there may be requirements. Certainly there are some in the zoning regulations for um, depending on if the property is in a floodplain about rebuilding. So that might be something we want to look at too, is just what zone you're in. Um, even so before you, you know, make plans to build, we could see what's existing in the zoning regulations.
So it sounds like the board is in favor of Teresa's proposal. But, okay. <clears throat> and uh, Jess, I can see you, do you guys have any comments in regards to that at this point, or do you want to take some time to um, to think about it and give Teresa some feedback or? Yeah, we're just going to kind of sit on everything and uh, just kind of get back to you guys in a timely manner. Sure. I, yeah, Joshua, I'll look at the um, zoning and, and too and, and let you guys know what the zoning says there. And then um, certainly get you a heads up when in, when, there's, when the road crew is going to come and, and do some work so you can be present. Maybe, you know, we can certainly meet and talk to the road foreman and kind of look at some options there too. So that way you can be a part of it when we, you know, when they come up. So we're working on it together to try to make it better. Sounds good. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. All right. So anything left in regards to the first appointment? Are we all good to move forward? Good. Um, so right now, um, Laura, do you have all your members that want to be present this evening for, for the um, committee's appointment or are you still waiting? I know we're maybe just a little early. No, I think we're right on time and I'm planning to represent for our committee tonight. Okay. All right. So, so we had, um, apologize. I think it was, uh, probably about, uh, close to a month now. Um, yeah, November 15th. Yeah. Okay. They so yeah, we're close to it. Um, so we had received, um, a letter from the EIV, um, just uh, going over some of the, um, well, we had a discussion, I'll back up. We had a discussion during the budget time. Budget time is, um, you know, throw everything against the wall. Let's see what sticks, makes sense. Do we want to make any tweaks to things? Um, so we have a very, very transparent, open discussion on things. And one thing that we had talked about uh, that caught some eyes was um, the trouble that we're having in <clears throat> continuing our current uh, policing policy, which is um, how we have it set up now, is we have 20 hours a week budgeted for a constable. Um, the constable's duties, for the most part, are, are animal enforcement, speed enforcement, um, everyday um, community presence. Um, and then, depending on the state police and where they're at, sometimes it can get more involved into you know, some other pieces, depending on certifications you know, drug activity and, and things that take a little more time. So <clears throat> one thing we had talked about the budget um, back, I don't know, a couple months ago when we were talking about this was we were pretty fortunate for so long that we were able, for a period of time, we were able to share a constable between three municipalities where, you know, one would get 10 hours, one would get 15 hours, one would get, you know, so we were able to share between uh, Rochester, Hancock here. Um, and then he, um, had moved on to the sheriff's department. And then we had Oscar and Oscar was able to give us, uh, he had duties at Killington as well as he was able to give us, I don't know, I'd say what, 15, 20 hours a week, Teresa on average. Yep. Um, in Bethel. Um, and then Oscar took a full-time position in Royalton. And um, so right now we've been, <clears throat> kind of splitting shifts with, with two constable, or no, with, with uh, two officers, um, which we're really kind of getting, uh, both officers have full-time jobs. So, you know, we get, you know, a little bit here and a little bit there at odd hours. So we were talking about, you know, how could we better serve um, our, or, or serve our community the way we have told we're serving it <laughs> with the hours. Uh, but one thing we started looking at is to get somebody right now you, with the way um, everybody's shorthanded is you, and you need a full-time presence. Um, when I say full-time presence, I mean, you need to pay somebody full-time because there's, you know, the 20 hours of community time 
turns into maybe 30 or 35 hours once you figure in the paperwork and, you know, going to a court date and doing paperwork and stuff like that. So, uh, so we had kind of gone through your questionnaire um, and I don't know how we want to start this. Do you want us to just go through and answer some of the questions, Laura, that you guys had laid out there and set? Yeah, um, that would be great. And then um, in addition, uh, Therese had recommended that our committee review the constable report. And we mm -hmm. have done that. And we actually have a few more um, comments, suggestions, and questions that arose from our review of that report. Um, so I, I would be happy if you guys have prepared some responses to the questions that we sent in November. Um, and then I would also like to have a few minutes to review our input about the report. Sure. So again, um, you know, when the select board was talking about this, we were talking, talking about it on a budgetary purpose, not a changing anything. We weren't going to change anything other than, you know, we felt in order to get to attract a high qualified individual and with the strings that come attached with the position now uh, that we needed to budget a full-time person. Um, and I don't know if you, uh, if the committee knew, knows or not, but we did end up uh, for our budgetary purposes, we did um, just to stay with the 20 hours a week um, is what we budgeted, but we did add in some extra speed carts because um, we have been purchasing some speed um, carts the last couple of years to try to work on some speed enforcement um, when the constable's not around. We, we do understand and appreciate that the select board decided not to expand the hours for the constable, um, but also just, you know, as an advisory committee on equity and inclusion um, in the town of Bethel, we, we still believe that the um, the questions about how we resolve these community-wide issues around speeding and substance misuse and even um, issues related to animals that we've heard about are um, really important to consider from an equity lens. Yep. So I'll, what I'll do is, um, and the members, if they have the um, EICs right up in front of you on the second page, um, second page, second paragraph is where the, there's seven questions that were put together. Um, so that's kind of where I'm looking at right now. Um, and I, I wouldn't say, Laura, that we have, the board completely has a full set of 100% answers. Um, other than what I'd like to do is just kind of go through it one by one. Um, we can put in our um, comments. Um, I think probably some of these we haven't even really even thought of because we didn't expect to even go that far um uh even on the budget end of things it was just kind of uh thinking about it um but the first one just talks about um do you have clear evidence on how policing in communities of similar size and demographics to bethel has decreased harm from drug use driving under the influence homelessness mistreatment of animals and or has resulted in decreased <coughs> So I, I'll just chime in. Chris, I'll, I'll, just, um, I'll just comment. I want to be clear that the reason we put those specific examples in were those were the examples given by the select board um, for needing to increase the hours. Yeah, so, so right now, the way the policing structure, and anybody can jump in after, is the, the way the constable policing structure is, well, it depends on what the certification of the officer is. So... In the past, and I don't, Teresa is really good with the certifications, the E4s or whatever they are, but um, we've always had a constable that just was up to constable certification levels. Um, and then when Oscar came, he had the full certifications of, of a regular police officer. Um, so depending on what their certifications are, allows them to do certain things. And then you combine that with the state police. So when the state police knows what the qualifications of your town uh, municipal officer is or constable is, then it allows the state police in some ways to kind of put a little more on your plate and they can go do other stuff. Um, so typically the constable is 
for the most part is, is a community presence to be in and around the town, working with the school. You know, we used to do things like DARE programs and, you know, and different pieces like that. Um, we, we have an obligation, um, it, all communities have to have an obligation to, um, to animal um, end of things. So it's not necessarily mistreatment of animals, but it could be misplacement of animals, um, uh, lost animals. Um, so we have to have somebody on duty um, to receive that and get them to the appropriate place uh, when that happens. Also things like dog bites and, you know, things like that. Um, I, all I can say under my experience of being in the town is, um, it typically the other thing you see is like speed patrol. It's a village. So i um, making sure that people are driving inside the speed uh, range. And then most recently when Oscar and those guys came on is because of their certifications that allowed them to do a few extra things that normal constables couldn't do. So they could take on some of the things like, you know, be <laughs> clearly see that there was um, some very questionable activities happening in and around the downtown during certain hours, right? Uh, which normally was a phone call to the Vermont State Police. And if they had somebody around, maybe they would check it out or maybe they wouldn't. Chris, where... can, I, can I just, yeah. sorry, I'm so sorry to interrupt you. I'm just concerned about the 15 minute limitation that we have. And I just, That's fine. Um, I just want to kind of clarify, and I really appreciate like the, the dialogue you're giving, but also I just think I just wanted to clarify that we were really looking for evidence. Um, uh, if the select board had sort of done any study or surveying nope. of similar towns, and and if not, that's totally fine too. But we were wondering. Um, yeah, so I I yeah, would say in this and, case, Laura, we haven't done any okay. any studies. <clears throat> okay, um, I but I think that's it. That was really the point of that question, and we think that. Um, I'll just say that. Um, we care deeply about the issues of safety in the community that were brought up. Um, and, and we would like to recommend an evidence-based approach. Um, so if that hadn't been done, which it sounds like it hasn't been, then our recommendation when it comes to any future conversation about um, policing is that um, there be a more, um, a more robust um, survey of um, possibilities, if that if that makes sense to those of you on the select board. Yeah, I mean, I think we're open to to all suggestions. Um, I think what we've done is probably just, I guess, what you'd call more trial and error of, you know, doing some things and seeing how it reacts in the community, positive or negative, and adjusting from there. So, um, I do want right. to. Just get, yep. Can I can I address just one thing? Sure. Uh, go, if you want to skip down to number six, um, you're, uh, are you in touch with other towns in Vermont that have successfully reduced speeding, driving under influence, homelessness, drug use, and issues involving whatever, that number six. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, there is a town in Vermont that is, uh, except for the homelessness, which is uh, something that I'm not sure that's under the police purview, but Maybe. It was mentioned by the select board as being. Okay, well, yeah. um, but anyway, the others, the town of Island Pond has that all figured out. You know how they do it? More police, more, more people out on the street to catch those people that refuse to abide by the laws. So um, I can't think that kind of goes with number one, that we didn't even have to reach out to them. It made the news how they had decreased crime in their town. I can't remember the number, but by a huge amount by having op, I can't remember his name either, but when you go into Island Pond, you slow down. You don't, oh, yeah. <laughs> you do what you're supposed to do because you know if you don't, you're going to be in trouble. And so that was taken care of by more police. Right. So that's why well, I think the, number six goes along with number one. So and I think that's, what, that's an example of the evidence that I hear the EIC asking for. Uh, there may be others. I would like to ask the EIC uh, if they would be willing to assist with that research uh, about other towns. Uh, 
that would be very, very helpful uh, for the select board to have that information. I also uh, understand, I also understand and appreciate uh, that there has been mixed uh, or even negative. Uh, in, uh, res there is research about the negative impact on some groups and persons of extra policing, even in the state of Vermont. So that is something that uh, I'm trying to be sensitive to. And uh, so that might also be part of the evidence-based uh, information gathering that uh, should, could inform us. And I think we also have to, and I think this is where homelessness caught in there. Is, you know, we also have to understand that our, you know, constable, police officer, resource officer, whatever you call the person, is also is also out there as uh, a tool um, to help different things. So, like for instance, we had a a gentleman who had come into town, I don't know, a couple months ago, Therese, um, that was homeless and. Um, and, um, you know, we were able to direct that individual towards some resources, um, shelters, food shelters, um, you know, food pantry, you know, places like that. So um, same thing with like, um, you know, if you were going to buy a used car off of Dave, he might have to go there and verify the VIN, and, you know, do those things so you can get registered. And, you know, so there's a lot of resource things, too, to think of. Um, yeah, Chris, that's, that's exactly what... Um you know, from an equity perspective, we're really interested in supporting the human service agencies who are who are the experts in issues around hom homelessness right. and substance misuse. And um, so I, I'm glad you bring up the importance of those resources. Um, and that's that's where we've um, where we've heard more stories of. Um, of recovery and success for people. Well, I, I think overall, I mean, a lot of some of the a lot of the questions in some ways kind of blend together in one way or another. Um, so I think it sounds like from from the select board um, that they're wel welcoming, you know, any information um, through research that that your committee can come up with towards, you know. Um, making policing better in our community, um, either from other examples, um, um, you know, or researches or, you know, or a local town, like, like uh, Dave mentioned, Island Pond, you know, taking that information and seeing how, how that might fit into our town. Um, one thing that I had written down on mine to, to just have is if there, I guess the way I see things a lot of times is um, personally is like, like what is happening in our town? You know, not Randolph, not Royalton, not Burlington, but like what is really happening in our town? And, and if the committee has any examples of positive or negative um, feedback in regards to what's currently being done, I think that would be very helpful for us to look at. So if you had, I'll make it up, an instance of, um, you know, some, some type of discussion that wasn't positive or, you know, something like that that happened between, you know, uh, the constable and a person or, or good instances like, you know, being a resource officer towards a homeless person, you know, so any of those like personal experiences in Bethel, I think, like, I would really like to, you know, share or have that info. Um, yeah. Look at that. I, I think that's a good point. And I also, um, and I also value the importance of learning from others. Um, so using those um, evidence-based models of what's, what has worked in other places, I think is also important. Um, but it, it kind of leads me to the next question or you know, observation we had was we did take Teresa's suggestion and review the constable's report. And I guess my first question about that is, 
Um, who reviews that? Is that something the select board reviews regularly? Actually, it, it had, he hadn't done one in a while. Um, Oscar wrote his own software, the spider data. And so he puts all the stuff in and, and he actually had been, when he first came, he was only, he was here. And I think it was Killington, Laura, that he worked part-time. So he used to give, you know, regular reports that went into the select board packets on a regular basis. And then we kind of realized that we hadn't heard from him, but he hadn't worked in a while. And he's out now for like a month plus, I think. And um, so finally, I was like, wait a second, we haven't heard from him in a while. So he put the reports together. And normally the select board gets them every month and they can take a look at them. But um, to get us back on track, obviously we're, we're over our 15 minutes, but I think that to answer your question, Laura, is we did not do, um, and I think most of your questions lead to that. And no, the answer is absolutely not. We didn't do any sort of evidence-based research. It was just this conversation we had, what could the budget sustain, that sort of thing. Um, so I think um, I'm anxious to see what information you guys can provide the select board after you have your two um, public uh, community conversations on speeding. I'm going to be really anxious to hear, you know, what sort of information you gather. And and you're right. If we have, um, you know, in the future, it may be worth doing that. Um, you know, having more of an evidence based. It's either something that equity inclusion, or we may have to hire someone to do it. I don't have time to certainly yeah. to do it at, at this point. So, um, but you're right. It would be nice to kind of see what's the combination that's going to work for Bethel. Beside, if there's other you know, signage, policing, and we did order two more signs and a speed car or, or didn't order them. They're in the budget. Depends if they pass. So they'd be too like, um, we have up. And eventually the goal is to have them on <clears throat> all entrances of the town and maybe have a couple of portable speed carts to kind of get people to slow down and that sort of thing. I know uh, Rebecca Sanborn Stone had an idea that came out during the Better Connections about some stuff that we'll be looking at the steering committee too. So um but well, Chris, it looks like Lenny's had his hand up too, just so you know. Oh, go ahead, Laura. Sorry. Uh, uh, Lenny, Lenny, would you like to go first, and then I can finish? Okay. Um, Therese, thank thank you for your input, and um, I'm glad to know that you guys are working so closely with Rebecca. Um, Sam Bornstone and our committee has also connected with them around the work they're doing for Bethel for all. And um, I want to let you know that we've actually made a decision to postpone our conversation, our community conversation. I'm so sorry. We, we, it's still really high on our radar, but yeah. um, we thought we could do something a little more collaboratively with Bethel for all. And also we hope to do it at a time like um, when the weather's warmer and we all feel a little safer gathering together um, for a face-to-face -face conversation. Um, but I, I, I do know we're running out of time, but if I may um, just take one more minute on the constable's report, um, Chris, we thought it would be a really wonderful way to your point of like collecting um, stories. And I, I love looking at data and I love it as a way of, of storytelling for a community. Um, but without going into great detail, um, after looking over the report, we found that there was um, the story did not reveal itself to us. Um, there were a lot of acronyms and codes that we were unable to decipher. Right. And there wasn't any reference or like a dictionary or any place for us to look back and see what the codes meant. Um, and there was not consistency with like how addresses were used and listed. Um, and then the other statistic that showed up monthly was around the average age of like the person who received a ticket. And at first we thought, oh, maybe this is a good part of the story. And maybe it's young people who we need to be working with because it, you know, in the first, on the yearly average, it was around like 20 something. But then later in July, it showed the average age of person pulled over as being 4.8 years old. And so then we thought, oh boy, this like, this is not um, relevant data. And so we are really um, interested in um, Chris, like really to your point of creating a Bethel story. And we think the data is a good way to do that. Um, and that's something that our committee is willing and eager to do just um, to 
to be supportive to the select board and um, town governance is to work with you um, if you're interested to to develop a report that does tell a data story um, that would be more meaningful so um, I, just thought I wanted to share sure. that on behalf yeah. of our committee if yeah, you it, have a list of things that were like that Laura that would be really handy if you don't mind shooting me an email and saying hey look we couldn't follow this because of the acronyms and we didn't the age mm -hmm. isn't that would be great I can send it to Oscar and to yeah. be like look we do have it already done I can happily send it to you oh and sweet then, and then yeah. I can look and see I'll talk to him I don't know if there's something <clears throat> you know wrong in his program because he wrote it he does software you know he developed the software himself so that would be great and then I can get it to him and get get it answered for you yeah. and the yes, other Paul. the other thing our um our committee had talked about is there's a woman who grew up in our supervisory union in our school district named Tabitha Pole Moore and she was the founding member of Vermont's first NAACP and she just concluded a long study with the Vermont State Police about improving their data story. And so um, we have a great relationship with her. And I think um, we would be eager to get her input on how she might, on what suggestions and what she learned with the Vermont State Police that could be helpful for improving our, um, our data story here in Bethel. Sure. That'd be great. Oh, Paul, did you have something? And yeah, I just, I just wanted to, to mention that in the past, um, those reports that we had looked at, the, the, the various police departments have to file certain reports with the state of Vermont that describes a, a breakdown of the type of stops that they're making. But they are also limited as to what personal kind of information they can put on there. Right. Um, the state is interested in making sure that there aren't any nationalities or races that are being stopped more than others. They're interested in that kind of data, but not so much, you know, the person's name or any of that personal type information. So Interesting that, uh, though, Paul, because the reports list people's name and home addresses. And yeah, pieces, yeah, I was you know? but, uh, it, but it didn't give other data that seems much more relevant than that. That's why I think the difference is between Oscar's proprietary uh, software that he's built. Um, I think the previous constable gave us a copy of his reports that he would send to the state. And it had a little more detail as far as the nature of the stops, but less detail as far as the, the actual person themselves. And, that's a, and I think that's the challenge that we've had in the past, Laura, is when we started getting like, oh, this is great. But then you look at them and because of what information can be used and not used and depending on which setting is then it makes it really hard to kind of find that picture like you were talking about um and even at the board level we had a hard time like oh what does this even mean you know because half the time like person's name and address can be in there because that's public record because they'll publish that in the newspaper you know where you know anything about like sometimes ages or sex or you know those things can't be put in there you know so it's really weird but um, so it doesn't give you the information that you would thought you would be getting, you know, um, to make a decision like that. Yes, Lenny, I'm sorry. we. That's OK. We so food for thought on um, January 7th of this month, the Vermont Digger published an article about a research that was done that black people are more likely to be stopped in Vermont and arrested and jailed six times higher than their white counterparts for the same crimes. And we make up 1.4% of the population. So when considering a constable and increasing policing as a citizen of Vermont and Bethel who is black, I think this has to be a long discussion before that just happens. And it has to be a discussion with the board and with minorities in this community of all kinds so that you really hear from them and that you really get an understanding of why we are we have a lot of trepidation about increased policing when we're already being policed at a higher rate <laughs> than anybody else for the same infractions or less and this was in the vermont digger on the seventh this was just put in. so i just want to put that out there as food for thought when increasing something like that um that we can really perhaps look at alternatives to policing 
You said in January seventh, Lenny. January seventh, twenty twenty. All right, I'll look it up and put it in the packet for the next yeah. select board meeting. Yeah. The, the only thing I want to add in there, just to correct you, Lenny, is we're not looking at increasing policing. We've never said that. But when you increase hours, you increase policing. No, not in necessarily. The no. So what the where this is getting confused is so so even like five years ago. Mm -hmm. You know, you could, so our town budgeted around 20 hours of service, right? So if, if you were a resident of this town 10 years ago, probably, you would have saw our constable probably at basketball games, um, mm -hmm. in and around the community, a little bit of speed patrol, um, that kind of stuff. And then the last five years, there's so, there's so much more paperwork, red tape, court appearance involved in and, and things so that we take away from some of the things that we had meant to do, like, like we don't have a presence at, you know, middle school um, because we just don't have time or a person. So we weren't, we were never talking about expanding policing. We were talking about right now to find a qualified person. Mm -hmm. We cannot find somebody that wants to come in for 20 hours a week. Right. Because every law enforcement agency in Vermont is trying to hire somebody. So why would they want to come to Bethel for 20 hours when they can go to Hartford for 40 hours, right? And be full-time benefit in the whole nine yards. So that we were talking that in order to get to 20 hours, we may have to have a full-time person or pay them a full-time wage to get them into our community. Because right now what's happening is nothing against our constable or constables when they're on duty is they're only giving us the time that they have, which usually like, can, can you, can you remember Lenny the last time you saw the constable in town? I mean, I don't see the constable hardly in town. Does anybody see the constable? It was a while ago. You know what I mean? So ago. that's the challenge we're having right now is we're getting the leftover hours because both, both of our constables have a full-time job, so they may come in on an oddball hour, like they might work Sunday night, right? None of us sees them on Sunday night. So is that really doing our community good by having somebody that's not present? Um, because all we're getting is the leftovers. And that's kind of where we were sparring this like budgetary. We we're trying to think, okay, if we really want to do what we are telling everybody, we we should be doing a year 20 you know 20 hours a week presence then we need to find somebody and pay them full-time wage um it's kind of almost kind of like the whole thing like we can't find anybody to work at the store for ten dollars an hour so we're gonna have to pay them fifteen dollars an hour you know what i mean it's kind of along that wage um but we weren't talking about like having a police department or or increasing our time we're saying right now probably 20 hours of in-person uh policing is probably really 30 or 35 total hours when you figure in like a court date for a pullover for speeding or doing the paperwork or uh, or the reports like laura you know putting those reports together all that stuff so yes gene uh i just wanted to uh, suggest that if i agree with the, the evidence base uh for what we are doing uh, I also think that the focus on Bethel is important, but not to disregard either areas, uh, air communities within our area, because we are very different than Rutland or Burlington or, or whatever, but especially those in our area. And third, I think that we should try to find out whether or not there is a raise, rise in criminal activity in this community or a decline and whether or not and what that uh, might uh, add to uh, any decisions down the road or recommendations we might make as a select board make to the town. And finally, I think I was very, very appreciative of EIC's offering to have those four open forums 
to gather information from community members. Uh, so I would, I hope, and what I heard Laura say was that they've been uh, not canceled, <laughs> but uh, rethought, or there is rethinking about whether and how they might be related to the uh, the Bethel Forward. Uh, I hope that's the case because I think gathering the information, including gathering from the town through a survey, I think is uh, is it more evidence that we need to hear. Thank you, Jane. Yeah. Sure, absolutely. <laughs> Well, I, um, I really appreciate the time of the select board um, to hear our comments and questions. And I'll definitely bring back to the um, EIC committee the questions um, and requests from the select board for their feedback. Sure. And, and if you um, have... I just want to, um, Lenny, I especially want to thank you for, the, for your comment about the recent article in Vermont Digger because it's really powerful and important evidence for us to to bear in mind too. And, and if there's any further information that you may need, um, I'm sure Therese can help you out with anything that we may have um, when it comes to reports or anything like that. Um, okay. Yeah, so we appreciate you guys doing hard work and and that's, what, that's why we have committees is because the select board cannot be doing everything all the time. So it's good, it's good to have others checking around and, and in this case, working on this for us. So thank you. Thank you. All right. All right. So we are moving on to the public comment period. So if there's anything that uh, isn't on the agenda that anybody would like to bring up, uh, now is the time. You raising your hand, Jean, or? <clears throat> uh, they're just an FYI, uh, and, and something we, we may want to take up at, at a later date. Uh, in Randolph, the Energy Committee is suggesting to the their select board uh, that they put uh, on their town meeting ballot, now we're not going to do that, but that they would empower the energy committee to work with nearby towns to make proposals to reduce municipal energy cost, lower consumption of fossil fuels, enable se and enable seminars on weatherization and energy generation. So I just thought it would be helpful for us to know that uh, we might want to uh, consider making a similar, either passing this along or making a similar request of our energy committee. I'll let Nicole Sear know. Um, and then if they, they can certainly do that anyways, and they do talk to other towns, but I'll let Nicole know, Jean, that they're doing that. And if Nicole, if the energy committee has some request of the select board, they can make it, but um, I'll let her know. I'll send her an email this week. Okay. I'll forward you this, Therese, just so you have, have it in writing. All right. Yeah. Excellent. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. I'll send it to her. Because I know our energy committee has some, remember, we have, what, two members from Royalton on our yeah. energy committee now. So we have, they had come to us. Were you on the board then, Gene? No. Okay, no. yeah. So we actually have two members on our energy committee in Bethel that are Royalton members. Because Royalton, I guess, maybe didn't have one or have something. One. And we were looking for members. So we actually do have two members from another town on ours, too, which is nice. We're stronger together, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought we ought to know what, what's yeah. going on. That's great. Yeah, thanks. We'll let her know. All right. Any other public it's comments? Sent. Thank you. Hmm. Don't see any hands, so we will move on. Um, Therese, you had on there uh, alternative. 
<laughs> authorization representative for phase two yeah. engineering loan. So that's just um, a motion to allow to appoint Pam. Yeah, and three of you will have to swing by the office and sign it. I'll put it out front. Um, and um, so that you guys, I just need three of you to sign it. So uh, yes, I'm the authorized representative, but they apparently they need an alternate, which is fine. And uh, so Pam will do it. <laughs> okay. She'll so be thrilled. Need, so just need a motion to appoint Treasurer Pamela Brown as the alternate authorized representative or the phase two engineering loan. Yeah. I'll move. Second. Okay, moved by Paul, second by Gene. All in favor? Aye. Okay, Aye. Have it or the hands. Sorry about the noise in the kitchen. Abby's making a Sunday and Brady in here salivating over that Sunday. So she's not allowed unless she can share. <laughs> That's you know, when you're COVID positive, you get to stay home each Sunday. So, um, <laughs> so and Brady's sitting here salivating. So, there we go. All right. And uh, next on, we had the um, survey for the town report that we had talked about, and Therese had, <clears throat> had looked out there and talked with um, our different um, identities to see what, what may be some appropriate questions. Um, that people would like um, to have on the town survey. So. Yeah, I sent you, I had to, I was had updated it after speaking to Rebecca. So I had to email it to you guys tonight since we weren't gonna meet in person. So um, this is what we talked about doing as the last page of town report, the back cover. So people could tear the cover off and either answer it and drop it off um, answer it and mail it back in or we're going to create a like a survey monkey link once the language is set so someone could also fill it in online or they could scan and email it so um you know the great thing about town report is it goes to all the registered voters and all the property owners so mm -hmm. i had talked to rick benson um you know he's the chair of the pc and obviously i'm on the planning commission too so we came up with the first question we actually reached out to um two rivers and, and talked to them as well so the um the part that had changed was number four was obviously um rebecca had you know we'd given people a place to find bethel for all plus the question is if we could change one thing to make bethel village more accessible to you what would it be so then there's a blank line but so people could could fill that in um and the other ones are you know to check all that apply or yes or no questions so mm -hmm. um i think what's we had also talked about um, was maybe adding a fifth question on here um, about Australian ballot and then asking people would they want to make it a two part question you want to vote Australian ballot for the budget. Uh, um, and, you know elected officials that way we could kind of. That way we could get feedback on that as well, then you'd have a better idea. Um, obviously. Um, we're waiting for some legislation. <laughs> some legislation is passed, which is allowing us to go to Australian ballot again this this town meeting and not hold town meeting. Um, what we're waiting for is uh, there's possibly pending legislation. What they had not done in this first passage of S-172 was to make it so that they would waive the petition requirements. So it doesn't make any sense that they want us to avoid, you know, town meeting and COVID exposure, but yet they want somebody to go out and do one to one to get 30 plus signatures to get on the ballot. So I'm assuming they're going to fix that. That's the talk, but I don't know yet what bill number that is. So if, but the law is clear, we currently have, if we were to vote in person, one of the questions on the warning is shall the town you know basically shall people vote so that we go australian ballot for officers if we vote australian ballot this year because of covid that comes off the warning we cannot the legislation is clear we cannot do that we have to wait until we vote in person in 2023 sorry i'm off so um 
so anyway, so if since if that changes, and it might be worth adding a fifth question on here, since we have to wait a whole nother year, let's see what people think. Do they want to vote the budget Australian ballot and officers or just officers? Let's let's get some feedback. So yeah, I like I like the idea of doing somewhat of a straw poll of the community, because that's been one of our big questions is how do people feel about this? And, you know, just like Chris has done a good job of asking everybody that's at a meeting, it's still a very small subset of people. And even if we as five board members go out and kind of pull a few people each ourselves, it's still a pretty small subset of our overall community. So I, I love the idea of including those two questions in this survey. Okay. So if anyone has I'm, any other feedback on I'm the survey. Dis I'm dis well, two things. One, I'm disappointed uh, that we are prevented from asking that change in an Australian ballot because we are limiting it to a committee. Uh, it's a committee of the whole, right. uh, but we are we are uh, we are excluding those who uh, do not for whatever reason attend in person uh, so i just need to say that i do think that that's a an, an a good option for a question and a and check all that apply might be appropriate okay good, uh, good that's good and and that there be just well leave things as they are or move everything or move one well anyway so i'll leave that the second the second thing is i believe there's too much information that you, we have about the constable question to just put it uh as stated without further explanation. Uh, that's a, um, we're asking people to make an, in, an informed suggestion when we don't, ha we haven't been able to give them the information they need. That's what would be the opinion. extra information? I, I will tell you, I will tell Tell you that I had that was one of my notes was on that, and uh, I was wondering if maybe it would be wise to uh, rather than leave leave it as police services, because it appears we have several different definitions depending on who you are of what police services are. Maybe we should define what police services are going to be. Well, I mean, again, I think the point is that we're not know why this is a difficult we're not changing anything other than the time that we would pay somebody well um, um, but we're that's not changing not it is necessary it right now right now we have we're using a console eight to ten hours a week because we can't find anybody because i'm on a part-time basis the the population the community does not know that chris that's one of the pieces of information that is not available. Uh, we've asked for uh, the EIC to do additional information gathering. We don't have enough information to make any kind of an informed uh, suggestion about that. To simply ask, do you want more police protection or police services uh, is asking people to make an uninformed uh, response and I, that's my opinion so you'd like to take it off then you'd like to remove I would that. like to take that one off well maybe maybe I would like to see it on there and the reason why is maybe maybe we can restructure the wording to show uh, to pay a full time or pay full time, but increase or not increase in police presence. Because I don't know why, I, I mean, I know why we're on this. It shouldn't be, is we're not increasing anything. We're not changing anything we're doing now. We're not changing anything. All we're saying is we can't find anybody. In order to find somebody, we need to pay somebody full time. 
it. That's what you are saying, Chris. That's what that's, you that's are what saying. That's what we're saying, period. There's nothing No, different. that's not what we are saying. No. That's what no. you are saying. That's what you're saying. Question. So I just, so that you, I, don't, I know why you're doing this and I understand that, but as a citizen of this town, it doesn't come off that way, is what I'm saying. Um, your reasons for doing that are different than increase the moment you increase hours you're in, you've increased policing from a citizen standpoint from a person sitting here not knowing about a budget not knowing about why are you doing this and all of that so that does have to be clarified um for the basic layman out here who is thinking well policing means more hours means more policing that well, that's guess. that's that's how it's equated Maybe um, I need to change the wording, Lenny, so that it says that we want to pay for, that we need to pay for, pay someone for 40 hours per week for 20 hours. Something of like that. You know, oh, yeah. if, that's what, if that's your intention, because if you're going to have them full time, more hours, no matter how you paint it, means more policing. Okay, it that really makes does. sense. You know what I mean? Um so I just want to throw that out there. The other thing is I have a question about what you're putting on the Australian ballots. When you put that in, I don't think people have the information. Will there be some information for them to go to a link and understand what they're, what they're talking about? You mean it, as in someone might not know what Australian ballot is? Oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> I, oh, oh yeah. Well, I mean, it's, okay. it's no can, different than the warning right now. I can yeah, define but you know, that. When you start using those terms, they go, what's that? I've already had that happen to me. When I yeah, that's true. I've had to explain it a few times myself. You I didn't know, think so about I'll, that. So I'll so define that. I have a little reference point I thought might be helpful. Then they can go and do the research there themselves, but it might be helpful. Okay, that, that's a good point. Yeah, you're right. I've explained Australian ballot plenty of times. I didn't, I didn't even think about it. So that's a good point. Thank you. I will make a note about that. Just a, a quick one on the... Um, on number two, and it's not about um, it's not about what we were just talking about, but it was more specifically stating it as um, being willing to support that via an increase in property taxes. I'm not opposed to that wording. I just was curious if other members of the board that caught me off guard because when we were discussing it, we were specifically approaching it from the budget standpoint and still creating a balanced budget, not necessarily with the idea that we would automatically increase property taxes. And I'm just wondering if other board members kind of got caught by that same thing and had the same thought of, does that, is that almost like leading the witness? Are we leading them to think that it would automatically mean an increase? And is that actually what the board was thinking if we, if we had gone that direction or would we have tried to still create a balanced budget and offset it in other places because that had been more my understanding was we were still I, looking at yeah that. i think that what happened was once we saw the actual numbers for a full-time officer plus retirement plus health insurance plus dental we knew we would have no choice but to raise the budget because i couldn't come up with that kind of money we never we couldn't have ever balanced the budget using using that number um I would just didn't want people to think, so this was where maybe I'm off track. I didn't want people to think that bringing someone in like that, all of a sudden the fine revenue was going to go up. So it's not like we're thinking we're going to bring this person in and they're going to raise, you know, you know, obviously quotas are illegal. You would never do that anyways, but you just wanted to make sure that I didn't want people to think, oh, we're going to bring somebody in for more hours and they're automatically going to get it via fines. So but well, maybe perhaps, my wording so, was too harsh. <laughs> so. Potential uh, increase instead. Yeah, and well, I guess to the other board members, do people want to take this off? The Gene wants to take question two off. Does everybody want to take two off, or should I just work on the wording? No, I, think, I think question two is a valid question. I think we need to flesh it out a little bit more with just uh, something like, you know, given the current pressures on our existing constable arrangement, do we want to increase, you know, something, flesh it out a little bit more, not necessarily with all the details, bells and whistles. Well, I, I think it needs to be a lot more because just with a 10 people there or 11 people on this Zoom, there's at least three definitions of police services. So 
and that's only 11 people out of 2,000. So, yeah, I had defined them at the bottom of the page, Dave, by saying provide law enforcement and animal control services, but maybe I do need, I should put that up at the top and, and spell it out it, more clearly. It, I don't, like, I, I do agree that very few people have any idea about the paperwork that's required by a law enforcement officer. And I also the other suspect- thing, I think people should, should also look at uh, the Royalton's police chief while she is full time, she spends time in the community making uh, strides to um, be part of the community, get people to, this is a police officer, I'm here to help you. And maybe that be part of our requirement of a police officer to be, to walk the, walk the streets. Don't get in the car and arrest everybody they see, just be part of the community. And maybe give I these would... people something that so they can feel safer because this officer who's walking around in a blue uniform is not out to get me he's out to make this community safe i so think I, I really think we need to i think i, I think would like to say i would like to suggest that if it is uh, a primarily or fundamentally a budget issue uh, that there is another approach that might enable us to share a more fuller discussion of what what Dave has said, what Leonard said earlier about Im, the imbalance of treatment of African Americans in Vermont, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. If we were to simply uh, put it on the ballot for 2023 meeting with uh, as a as a separate item from the quote budget, uh, which would be to in to authorize an increase of the budget uh, to a provide for uh, making it easier to hire somebody to do what we're asking to be done. What are the benefits? What are the, and that could then be a, a community wide or a town meeting wide uh, uh, conversation rather than a simple, yes, no, I like this idea or I don't. I think it is too complicated and too nuanced uh, the way it stands. And so again, I encourage it being removed from this survey. Uh, we have the capacity to establish a budget and then to defend it or, or to, and in this case, I'm suggesting, uh, add it as a, an addition. We wouldn't change the budget until 2023 anyway. That's, uh, that's my suggestion. But wouldn't you want to have more information before you ask people to vote on it? I mean, this this is going to help us if we put this on the ballot now. Maybe redefine police services. I don't know. I, I'm not a linguistic person, but I do know that that seems to be very, very. Uh, I don't know. Not not informative. I would like to have that information before I had to vote on it, rather than police services, because. I mean, if I was a, a person who hated everybody, I would say, good, go out there and arrest everybody that, that looks wrong, okay? Or, or the other person who says, well, you know, are they gonna do that or are they gonna come out here and they're gonna shake my hand and, and show me how they can support me? And I think with that on there as a question to let people talk about now, this year, would maybe have an opportunity to put on a ballot in 2023. That's I, I think look, all these are is just getting some ideas out there that we have <clears throat> to see if we want to, you know, go any farther with any of these. So I mean, I, I, I'm sure that we can word it better, you know, somehow of, you know, in order to provide the 20 hours of, of community coverage that we have, you know, 
have relied upon for years. In order to do that now, we have, you know, would you be interested in paying somebody full time to do that position? Because, you know, because you can't find somebody for that money or something. But maybe the I'm other sure we could option. Do it someday. Maybe the other option too is besides the yes no is also put in a place where people could write a sentence or so of like maybe a comment or a concern or something so we could gather a little more information. Certainly reworking the wording, like Dave and and um, every and, and Jean and everybody suggest, and reworking it, but also giving people a place to make comments. So then in the future we might be able to flush out some more details if everybody says the same concern. Um, you know, we you'd, you'd have that information, like Dave is saying, you'd have more information because this is just a survey, it's, you know, so I, I can see what Dave's saying. You want more information for 2023. So we could add a comment line in there too and gather some data. And, and I, like Lindley was saying, I think the property tax increase of property tax piece is a little confusing because, okay. I mean, obviously if, if we ended up going that route and paying somebody full time, it probably would affect property taxes somehow. Um, it may be affected by all whatever forty or fifty thousand. Maybe it affects it by ten or something. But yeah. I'm sure well, we could try point. to balance that. But but I think all this is it's just it's just a jumping off point of you know may, maybe it's right down the middle. Half the citizens say yes and no, or maybe it's overwhelming one or the other, and then we can have that conversation. You know through you know through our different committees and our select board, you know, to say, okay, this is worth time investing, right? Um, you know. Did you have something, Jesse? Try yeah. to reword it somehow. Yeah. Yeah, I think um, I have a couple points. Um, one is that I think, um, yeah, I, Chris, I agree with you, the like combining the because it's possible there are people, yes, I want to see an increase in services, whatever that means, but I don't want to pay for it with, with property taxes. Mm -hmm. Like, so those two things together may not, might not make sense. I also think, um, yes, there are a lot of questions as to what those services, I definitely support there being room for somebody. I mean, my, personally, I'm interested to know what people in this town think that this police services are doing for them or what they want to see from such police services that what's not happening, what is happening now. That's what I'm actually interested in. But um, I understand that this survey has a specific um, use. And I think that it might be helpful to have that at the top of the survey saying, this is not an official vote. We just want your input as a citizen of this town. Um, something that's clarifying about what this is, because I'm just, I'm not assuming people like where people, people are coming from all different places and have different levels of, of um, familiarity with how this process works, how the town government works. And I would assume people know basically zero about the process <laughs> and just lay it, lay as much out there as you possibly can to explain what is going on. So that um, I like that question too, Jesse. That's a good question of what services would you like the constable to provide? Well, that's that's actually that's an excellent question. I'll, I mean, because you're right. Someone might say dog. Someone might say speeding. Someone might say drug enforcement. That's also a, a way to get some more information. So that's I wrote that down, and and I will. I agree with what you're saying about letting people know it's just a survey and. Yeah, and I also that may be a check all that apply. Mm -hmm. Sure, and I mean I think that's also an opportunity to explore those things as not being something a constable or police officer deals with. Like those might yeah. just. Be like, I think we have a unique opportunity here to do a survey. Like this is something that our committee has been talking about doing a survey of all residents that we could possibly reach. So uh, this is a good yeah. opportunity to reach a good number of people. That yeah, one. we're trying to, there used to be something at town meeting, I don't know if you remember, called the Doyle Poll. Senator Doyle used to do a survey every year for, you know, 100 years, and um, the, the local rep would drop it off, and people would fill it out, and then and they would take them back, and God bless them, he and his people would sort it. So we were kind of just doing that, trying to work on planning and zoning, better connections, um, and then not just stuff to vote on, but other things. Like we're on the planning commission, we're looking for information, so um, about 
uh, density. So this was trying to cover a lot of bases, but I, but I like that information. So I'll just try to rework that question and take everybody's comments and um, additions and, and we'll add Australian ballot and redefine in a better way the constable question. You could also add a question on there, Therese, which is basically, you know, what other services in town would you like to see? Um, just a blanket where somebody can write in, we'd like, or, or what other topics do you think the select board should take up in their next session or something? You know, like just a random. Yep. I mean, I know it makes it more difficulty because like survey monkey and stuff, you can't like, you know, write on survey monkeys are more like, yes, no, check all that type of thing. Mm -hmm. um, I know it makes it a little more difficult. Okay. Not to dumb it down, and this may make your job a little harder, um, Therese, but you don't want to dumb down the survey, but you want to remember that you have to sort of approach people like they're six years old when it comes to stuff like this. Okay. You, you know, you know, do you know what I mean? It, it's, I do. I remember an English teacher telling me once that anything you wrote that you were going to publish, you should write at a 10th grade level. Yeah. That's what I, I don't know. I just was stuck in my head. I, a teacher told me that once and I've remembered it since. Because assuming well, that today people, it's fourth grade level. <laughs> yeah. Assuming that people know and understand and approaching it that way. Yeah. <laughs> on, on That's a good for point. example. Until I became a member of the select board, I didn't know that we had a constable, but not a police officer. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that. That was not information that was uh, falling off the tip of my tongue. One, one thing that just uh, that got left out of this conversation that Teresa and I had talked about is <clears throat> once this survey is put together in whatever form we approve it in, uh, we plan on not just passing the survey out, but at town meeting day, if we do it in person, then we would have a conversation from the floor with each item so that people understood what that meant. So, I mean, obviously if people go on ahead of time and they uh, turn their survey in early, then we wouldn't get the explanation, but we had planned on, right, Therese, of putting that in there either under non-binding resolutions or- Yeah, or having Rick Benson talk about, about it. Yeah. And we still could do that when we have budget discussions and stuff. Once the warning is set, which you'll sign, not mm. obviously you'll sign the warning at your next meeting. Once we know what's exactly happening on the state level, then we will do that. And, and um, we can make sure we try to talk about it at all the select board right. meetings, budget informationals, that sort of thing. Because like I, what well, Les was great. saying, yeah, Chances are everybody's going to get confused on these surveys anyways, even the cannabis one, they'll say, well, uh, I don't want it in my town. Well, it doesn't mean that. It means, you know, selling, selling at retail, you know, so. I know. Well, thank you. I think the input was really good. Thanks everybody for doing that. And I'll, I'll rework it with everybody's suggestions. And, um, but so thank you. I appreciate that. It was helpful. All right. Discussion on deputy health, health officer vacancy. So yeah, this is, <laughs> as we all know, we currently do not have a deputy health officer. And this is saying that our, I, I don't know why they're saying the term is going to expire because we don't have one right now, but they're well, saying- because I was there, I think. Well, you were, and, yeah. um, but that's what's gonna happen is on the 31st. So basically mm -hmm. I was just asked to put it on here to let people to see if you guys knew someone um, or to reach out to somebody who might want to be the health officer or the deputy health officer. I can't remember when Neil Fox's term um, expires, if it's this March or next March. Do you remember, Paul? I think that they're referring to Neil Fox's position. I think uh, he's coming up. Um, I'm not sure what the, because you have to take an oath and all that whatnot. I wonder if that's not Neil's. Um, I don't think so wow. because there is the health officer, which was Neil and the deputy health officer was Chris. Right. So I, I thought this was the yeah. vacancy for Chris. And, um, but and you don't have to, I was looking into it. You don't have to have a deputy health officer. I thought you had to. But it, the deputy health, well, I won't say the deputy health officer is the one that fills in for the health officer if they're incapacitated for whatever reason. 
the chair of the select board would also be deputized to do that as well. So by, by statute. So well, I think maybe maybe Paul's right. Maybe I'm thinking deputy health officer because that's what you were. Maybe Paul's right. This is maybe they call yeah. Neil a deputy health officer as deputy of the state instead of yeah. just health officer. But yeah. either way, we need somebody. So I was hoping yeah. that it's you guys form, would talk to people and maybe you would come up with somebody who was interested in being, you know, filling the position of the deputy health officer, Neil. Um, you know, Neil's it's, done it for a long time. God bless him. It's really got to be somebody that has some excitement for, for this because it's um, in my short time, I don't know, it was less than a year that I did, you know, deputy health officer when helping out Neil is, I mean, it's a full time, you're on call all the time. So I, I will say that probably 80% of the calls that you get, you probably are just briefly investigating to see if, if that's part of your purview or not. Um, but the other 20% that you actually have to go out and I mean, these, these in-person questionnaires are huge. I mean, they're like 18 pages long. Uh, that you have to do, take pictures, and then you have to report it, send it all back to the state. And it, it is very time consuming, I will tell you. Um, so it has to be somebody that has, <laughs> has some time. So uh, do they have to be a Bethel resident? I think so. Yeah, good question. I don't, yeah. I would, I assume, would assume so because every town has them and they're not easy to find. Um, and and there, and were also, we, there were also other responsibilities that they have. They are now. Aside, I went and looked. Aside from the phone call that you get from a tenant, you, the health officer is supposed to be involved in COVID regulations and COVID procedures at the, at the school. He's supposed to be looking at uh, uh, cleanliness in the kitchens and things like that. There are a lot of other responsibilities that also go along other than just the phone call from the, uh, the tenant who's got a complaint. Yeah, mo most of the issues tend to be uh, tenant uh, complaints and um, like uh, food preparation or, you know, if you got sick at an establishment type deal is where most of the calls come. Uh, but yeah, like Paul was saying, they have greatly have added on to that since the COVID um, piece, which doesn't help our case for finding somebody, but it's, <laughs> it's there's a lot there. Well, like well, I mentioned be before, they're also trying to get the health officer away from doing inspections of properties where they really don't have the background to be able to make a decision about building regulations and violations and things like that. They are trying to get them away from that uh, part of it. It'd be nice if we could find a retired, you know, nurse or doctor, or somebody maybe in the community that, you know, has a good background in, in, in some of that. But, um, but anyways, whoever is interested, if you know someone who's interested, you know, please talk to people and let them know. Um, we're still looking, you know, obviously for a, a deputy health officer. We're also looking for a tree warden. Uh, so you know, we're, we, we definitely have some needs. So if you know of anybody, please talk to them and we'll put it on the warning or I'll put it on the um, agenda again for next time. I just wanted to kind of bring it out and talk about it publicly that we have some need. Is, Doug, you said you'll do it, right? Oh yeah. <laughs> we, we can make that happen for you right now. I, I know you will but I don't yeah, we'll put a little extra cash in your pocket we may not enough that. not nearly enough but some yeah. his official <laughs> title, the health of the trees officer <laughs> you could be yeah health officer slash arborist that's right oh. yeah that that might be that you know that might be one that you know we may be sitting here in march trying to figure out how this is going so you will be panicking because it's you otherwise so you'll be i expect no it's only whoever part. the chair of the board is and that's mm -hmm. like we'd be it'll be a full page ad in the herald paid for yeah. by chris jarvis and we yeah. need uh, i think it's six hundred dollars a year is the stipend but and, and that might be we had talked about different appointed positions i know this year we tried to start to work on some of the uh, monetary values for that, but 
I think going forward, the health officer one might be one we might want to look at as a higher stipend um, because there's a lot of time that goes into it. Um, you know, it's probably something instead of 600 to be more like three or 4,000. Um, you know, maybe that's probably not even worth it. Yeah. But time. What about Janice Punger? She'd be good. But, but I think she wants fifteen thousand a year. <laughs> she wants a lot more than six hundred dollars. But that was will have her. To her. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it does take a lot of time. Yeah, it. Maybe everybody okay. on the board needs to just do a little bit of service on it. Uh, get your feet wet. <laughs> <laughs> okay, right. eight o'clock. And we got, um, we have some personnel that um, Therese was talking about that have some balances of their PTO time um, that has not been used. Uh, did everybody get a copy of that in your packet? Yeah. So I guess what, um, Therese, you want to talk about it or? So obviously per the personnel policy, it talks about the max accumulation you can have of vacation and or sick time. In this case, it's vacation time. I don't track people's you know, vacation time. It comes up every two weeks on their pay stub. So um, in this case, I think, you know, things can't happen. You know, we had a water project going on. Maybe you couldn't take off the time you wanted. Some people had plans, things they were going to do during COVID. And then obviously couldn't do those things because um, they were canceled. So there's some, by the personnel policy, uh, you have a max accumulation and what you have over that is gone. If you didn't use it, you lose it. And um, there's not some, there's only one that's large here. The other ones are, are, fairly reasonable. So I had, you know, so I just wanted to talk to you guys about maybe rolling it over, maybe even giving a timeline saying either, yes, you can roll it over. No, you can't, or you can, but you have to use it by X, or we're only going to roll over a portion of it. Either way, it's a gift. You know, whatever you do is a nice gesture. Everybody knows the personnel policy and how it works. Um, it's a personnel policy it was in place before I got here. So, um, Mm -hmm. Anyway, so that's it. I just need a decision. It's not a decision within my purview to make because it's um, not a policy that, that I'm in charge of. It's yours. And, and the reason why, I don't know what it was about three years ago, maybe four, that we had updated the policy is because we had quite a bit of town employees that had had rolled this time over for years on end. Yeah. Uh, you and, did, and you used to pay people out big chunks of money yeah. for vacation and sick time accrued, and that was changed. So after, if you were hired after X amount of date, um, you could know, you know, they you didn't pay those out. So you, you've slowly paid out people. I think we only have a couple left. Um, and obviously, the personnel policy is something that's on my radar. I'm going to work with Stitzel, Page, and Fletcher to come up with some new draft language. Um, but anyways, I had talked to Dave Eddy about this today. I talked to Chris about it. Um, so either, so whatever, I'm not sure what your choice is. What do you want to do? I mean, I would move that. Muted yourself, Gene. Whoops. I recommend, or I would move that we uh, accept this recommendation, uh, recognizing that this has been an extraordinary year and extra demands on those offices, positions. So I would, uh, I would uh, ask that maybe we do recognize that, but some of those numbers are pretty high numbers, so I'm not sure it's just this year. But I'm not, I'm not uh, saying take away, but I am saying that uh, use it or lose it, in my opinion, is the way it should be. And if we want to put, and I believe we should, put a timeline on that. Uh, Teresa and I had a conversation today, and uh, I've worked in enough places so that I can tell you from experience that if you're not taking that time off, you are not giving us, that's not the way I want to say it, 
I don't think we're doing right by you by not having you take some time off and get reset. That's true. Take some time off. Okay. It's not good. It's not healthy. So uh, I'm going to say that we force, I hate to use these words, but we force these people to take some time off or lose it. If you, if you really want to, if you really don't want to take the time off, well, I'm sorry, but we're going to give you an option. I so did you want to put a date on it? Like they have to use it by June, by May, by whatever, what was <clears throat> your thinking? Due, due to the different numbers, let me look quickly. I would think giving them this year, but then not more than this year. Cause I, th I think really only in the one case, does it concern me that it's not, it's still not going to be even usable in a year. I don't think it will be either. I think months. it'll end up, they'll lose yeah. some of it, but yeah. I, I was... think six months only just makes that a harder issue. So give them the year, but that's it. Next I mean, year starts. I would agree. Our, our budget ends the end of June. So in some ways sticking to our budget um but when does the when does the rollover count or not january we so, do it in january yeah, right for now. some reason it's calendar year here i don't know why but yes but it's calendar year so gene you're saying i i i would say it must be taken as vacation no pay in lieu of right. and it must happen by the end of 2022. So you want to give people a year. And I, That's, I is that your uh, rent, is that your amended motion, Jean? Yes, yes, and I'm making it 11 months. <laughs> I, I had a little bit of a different. Uh, what I was going to recommend was, being that three out of the four people's hours are, what I would say, reasonable. Um, there is one person that has. Uh, quite a bit of hours that I think even if you let them have the whole year, they're not going to use it. And I think Lindley had kind of pointed to that. Um, I was thinking that we would allow up to 40 hours to be rolled over, but it would have to stay inside our budget. So it'd have to be used by June 30th. That was kind of what I was going with. Um, which would take care of two of them very easily because there's inside the 40 one person slightly over the 40 and then like we had talked about the other person has quite a bit of hours accumulated that even I, that plus their new hours they're never going to take all that off um okay so to recap we have a motion from gene for 11 months with no second chris is saying only given everybody 40 hours and they of only up to 40 hours extra, no matter how many they have rolled over and they have to use it by June 30. Right. So is somebody gonna second? <laughs> Julie's probably going, what? <laughs> so, <laughs> so we I don't know what you're gonna have, do here. You also Nobody have can... to look at, at Pam's situation where she doesn't necessarily have a, a backup that can drop in for all those hours either. That's true. She only, her and I budget, we do budget for X amount. I think we budget for 80 hours a year for Jean, for Jean Burnham to fill in for Pam, Paul, because sometimes Pam can, you know, she's closed for a week and we've but taken her stuff or, or Pam will parted. also work, you know, she'll work, she'll fill the hours with work. That's just her nature. True. And, and how I, I'm, I'm, I will not dis, I will not disagree with you. I'll go back to my same point. Yeah, She's I agree with you, Dave. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to stick by that. No, I, I agree with you, Dave. We, we're doing them a disservice by not impressing upon them that they need to take the time. It's there for a reason. And, and I'm, I'm cautious that we set a precedent um, that, you know, what happens next year? COVID's still going to be here. We're still going to be going through this for another year. So what happens next time around? I I also sort of going along the same lines of what Dave and Paul were just talking about. I feel like with um, with this in particular, kind of keeping mental health at the forefront and giving somebody a little bit more flexibility. And I know this is not what we're discussing tonight, and I'm not even asking us to discuss it tonight. But I know that a lot of through COVID, a lot of organizations have started a a COVID time bank that employees can gift their time off to other employees should they need it for COVID related 
whatever, even if it's like, I've got a sick kid and I have to stay home and it's really hard to work from home, you know? So I, I think giving people a little more flexibility for that mental health reason is really important right now. And I, I, no, I don't disagree with what Chris was going with this of limiting it. I, I also don't think that 140 additional hours is, are gonna get used even in a year, but giving that flexibility speaks volumes to what we're asking them to do for their own mental health, as opposed to just saying you have one extra <laughs> week of time off to carry over. It's a little different of a feeling, I guess. So are you going to second Jean's motion then? I'm leaning towards it, but I haven't yet, have I? No. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, would, I would amend that again to limit it to uh, 48 hours. Okay, so you want to amend your motion to giving them 11 months to use up to 48 hours. Okay. Yes. I just need to keep this written down, that's all. Okay, 11 months, 48 hours. So now you're combining Dave's, I'm, Chris's, I'm and I'm listening and, and including Chris's comment. <laughs> I feel like we should just put her out of her misery and give her a second. I'll second Jean's motion. And you repeat the motion. <laughs> so, so, so Jean is moving to allow up to 48 hours in additional rollover to occur that has to be used within 11 months. And it has to be taken as time off. Yes, we don't pay for people for vacation leave anyway, so. Right, okay. All right, so in Pam's case, then she will be out a little under 100 hours. Which she's aware of. I told her that originally when I did the math, I told everybody, this is how many hours you're going to lose. And she knew that, and she said she knew it was in the policy. So anything that you do over this is going to be a nice gesture. So, um, so I will, so if that's your motion, you're at 48 hours, then it's still you know, it's still a, a week, which is still nice. It's better than you would have if you follow the policy, which was nothing, you know, just what you normally did. So it's still very nice. Question. Julie has a comment. Did we have a date in there, like the end of the year, rather uh, cap calendar year, rather than just 11 months? Sure, that'd be great. 12, then by December 30th of 2022. 31st. Okay yeah. with Jean. Is that okay with Lindley? I can buy that. You guys, so you just need to vote on that? Aye. Aye. <laughs> Well, did we get a second? On, there was a motion. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Lindley, Lindley Lindley seconded the 11 months. Okay, all in favor? Until De December 31st Aye. used the 48 hours. All right. Aye. Thank you. One, two, three. Now, Andrew's report. Do we have anything okay. left that we haven't discussed did yet? We get, did we get five votes? Yes, I think you did. Four. I don't need to vote. Um, no, I think you're set. I think we've talked about everything. I was just browsing through your notes here to see if we forgot anything here, but. No, I'm just looking. I think we're good. All right. Select board meeting minutes from the 27th. Anybody have anything? No, I just need a motion to approve. So moved. Okay, moved by Dave. I uh, got my name spelled wrong on the back page again. Oh, you... that's that's not uncommon. <laughs> oh shoot! I just saw it just now. Okay, I'll fix okay. it. Thank you. I'll check. Probably changed it. Sorry. Uh, just a editorial comment. There, in what I'm looking at, there are a number of instances where words have been run together, and I'm assuming that the official copy 
uh, does not have that. Well, let's that hope. Sometimes happens when you transfer it from my, what I send Teresa and right. she, I make it into a PDF. Yeah, and then I turn it into a Word document. So sometimes right. it does. So my copy for, looks pretty good, but I there's well, a couple. Well, for example, uh, number f page three, uh, number four, the select board agreed with this. There's no space. So I know. I, that's and, editorial and I just wanted to point that out. All right. And it's Come. funny, Jean, is sometimes I if I put my cursor in there, I can't, it won't let me tab in spaces. Sometimes it will. So it is just it's a, it's a glitch in the between me. Yeah. Yeah, it's not the same as a it's there quite a bit. Yeah, it's it's just it it's okay. not a perfect conversion. I've <laughs> made my try. comment. <laughs> I've said what I need to. Okay, so approve as amended. So just need a motion to approve as amended. I moved. Okay. I'll move. Okay. Second. Paul. Dave. Paul. Yeah. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right. There were a couple of other communications in there, uh, there were meeting minutes in there to go through, as well as there was um, our general budget status um, printout for the month. If anybody had any questions with any of that, I have I have two questions on the budget. Okay. Uh, probably it's me not paying attention, seeing it previous, but telephone at the town hall. What do we need? expense for the telephone at the town hall well there's a telephone at the town hall and the wi-fi is there okay so that's on their telephone yep okay and the other one was about under municipal i think it is uh boarding equipment and supplies if we have to go with the new legislation that's probably not enough money well, I think you might be okay because um, Pam said that, because we'll just copy the ballot, photocopy the ballot. Um, Pam said you're going to hand count. So that'll save you a lot of money because okay. if you did- You're not going to do it in the machine. Right. You'd have to program okay. the machine plus print the ballots. Okay. She's saying you're going to hand count it. Okay. That's all I got. I have a, uh, under uh, solid waste, I see an 11,000% increase in other. Was curious as to what that might be. I Let me just look real quick. I think it's current, I, yeah. Yeah, let me just, I'm sorry, let me take a look. It's because we receive every once in a while um, restitution because there was an embezzlement years ago at the solid waste at the transfer station. And because VLCT passive paid out the claim, any restitution that you receive has to be, um, we take it in as a Pay revenue back. and cut them a check as an expense. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. It doesn't happen very often. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately. Just caught my attention. <laughs> at least it's under the revenue. <laughs> <laughs> True. The only thing I had saw, Teresa, and we had talked about before, but, you know, we're about half, well, we're halfway through our, our year, but not halfway through, like, our highway budget year, and we're already at 64% on repairs, tires, and stuff, and yep. usually wintertime is when the equipment takes it the hardest, mm -hmm. so I'm a little worried that we're already smoking that through that budget pretty quick. I know. And he's, you know, he's had some issues, had some, had some repairs. Hopefully it slows down. He hasn't had anything recently. Hopefully it catches up. Otherwise he knows the drill. He has to underspend another line item to, um, well, the concern is then we'll, we'll end up underspending the gravel for the roads that we talked yeah, about. Yeah, no. Yeah. We talked about you salt know, or something or no. overtime or no, no, I, I agree. We have had a conversation about it, but I mean, when stuff breaks down, he's repairing it and he bought tires at the beginning of the season. So that would have already thrown him over um, out of skew a little bit, but well, he's some of front loaded. 
There's a lot of new tires and new tire chains up there right now. Mm -hmm. Hey, so speaking of tires, I haven't been up there, but I just, I would make sure that those tires are in a secure location too. Okay. I mean, tires are very expensive to begin with. And I know right now with things the way they are, tires is one of those pieces of merchandise that people are looking to steal. So if they're okay. not a secure building, I don't know. Are they, does anybody know if they're like laying around outside or if they're inside? Uh, I don't think so. They're I think not. they're on. They're not. Okay. But yeah. you could be a rugged boy to pick up one of them tires. Uh huh. <laughs> For, you know, depending on what size tire they are, you know, if they're just a regular truck tire, they're about $1,000 a piece. So you'll find out, you find a quick way to put that in the back of your truck, right? Yeah. Okay. I'll make sure I let Alan know. Yeah. And then like those loader tires are like, <sighs> they're expensive. So. Uh, one more question, and this is just for my information or understanding. On the balance sheet general fund, there are two references to a sweep account or sweep savings. Yep. I would like to know what sweep is. Sure. It's basically the money. What they do is we have a sweep that attaches with our checking account and it earns more interest. So basically, instead of keeping all your money in your checking account with a low or no interest at all, it sweeps over to this. And then the bank automatically does it every day. They sweep money either way, either towards us to pay our bills or back into the sweep into the savings. So, and then there's Thank a you. special collateralization agreement that protects your money because it goes over the FDI and C insurance. And speaking of that, the audit, I just finalized the draft audit. Um, I got it last week, finalized it, um, wrote the management responses. And this year was the first time um, that I've done, I wrote, or I've done it in other towns, but never here. I wrote the management discussion and analysis. So, um, so that's off to the auditors. And um, so you should be seeing final drafts soon. Thank you. All right, any other business to come before the board this evening? Anything that we just thought of needs to come up? Hearing none, what we will do is um, we'll just need a motion to enter executive session to discuss confidential attorney client communications and contract negotiations with the town of Royalton. Uh, we have to adjourn the select board meeting and then move into executive session? Nope. No, okay. I'll give you the, I'll add it to the minutes later when they came out but, and any okay. motions they made. But there shouldn't, shouldn't be anything um, afterwards, so. We need a motion. So moved. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. So thank you everybody for this evening. Thank you. We won't be making any um, any public uh, decisions afterwards. So, all right. Have a good, good night, night, everyone. Good night, dogs. See you, health health director. <laughs>